here's another problem. We're looking at what is the pH of, we've got our flow chart, uh, we've worked through several examples. Now let's come to the example, what is the pH of a 0.21 molarity solution of trimethyl ammonium perchlorate? First thing you ask yourself is, is that an acid, base, or salt? When you have a what is the pH of question, you go down the flow chart. Is that an acid? Is that a base? Is that a salt? It's not an acid. Otherwise, the name would be blah, blah, acid. Now, there's something about it that makes it kind of sound like a base. It might be ringing some bells, but notice there are two names. And when it's typed out for you on a quiz question or a homework question, it's very obvious. There are two names to it. And as we talked about in the last video, that's the pattern of an ionic compound. It is made up of the two ions. Each ion has its name. That's an ionic compound. I have a salt. This is a salt. If I look on my KB table, there is not this compound. There is no trimethyl ammonium perchlorate on my KB table. There is no trimethyl ammonium perchlorate on my KA table. It's a salt. And as such, that means there are two ions. It's made up of two ions. It is made of the trimethyl ammonium ion and it is made up of the perchlorate ion. Now the perchlorate ion should look familiar from Gen Chem 1. You may or may not have had to memorize the polyatomic ions, but you should at least be familiar with them and maybe go get you a list of polyatomic ions to have handy as you take your homework, your quizzes, your exams. When you look up the perchlorate ion, it is ClO4 with a minus charge. That one I expect you to know or to know fairly easily. The trimethyl ammonium ion, you probably don't know that off the top of your head. That's okay. So how do I figure out what the trimethyl ammonium ion is? Again, there's this familiarity with something about our weak bases. Go look at the weak base table. I'm not gonna try to project it for you. It worked last time, but I can't see it. So if you look on your KB table, pull it up, pause the video, go pull it up and scroll down. There is on this KB table something called trimethyl amine. One word. Trimethyl amine, all one word. Trimethyl amine is a weak base. It is a weak base on our weak base table. It has a KB value. It is very, it is named very similarly to trimethylammonium ion and trimethylamine, and you need to be able to recognize that's the pattern of a conjugate acid base pair. Trimethylamine is a weak base. That means the trimethylammonium ion is his conjugate acid. Just like ammonia is a weak base, the ammonium ion is his conjugate acid. You, you need to be able to recognize that. So trimethylamine, I can write the formula for it. I can Google it. I can make it out from the thing that is shown on the KB table. That's the formula for trimethylamine, which is the weak base. Therefore, the trimethyl ammonium ion, what does a weak base do? A weak base accepts a proton to become the H plus. So the trimethyl ammonium ion is what CH33N becomes once he grabs an extra H plus. There's the formula of trimethyl ammonium ion. You can Google it. It should look something like this. Again, some letters might be in slightly different places, but this is what the trimethyl ammonium ion looks like. So trimethyl ammonium perchlorate is CH3 parentheses NHClO4. I don't write any plus or minus signs anymore. Once I put the two ions together, and again, if you Google trimethyl ammonium perchlorate, you're going to see something like what's here in the box that doesn't tell you anything unless you know how to deconstruct it. So I've got my two ions, and recall from our flow chart, once you've got a salt, you break it up 100% into ions, and for each ion, decide whether that ion is acidic, basic, or neutral. And I didn't add this to the table last time, but if it's a neutral, you ignore it. In a what is the pH of question, you can ignore the neutral ions. If you end up with all neutral ions, it's easy, pH equals seven. But if you don't have all neutral ions, you can ignore the neutral ones and you just have to focus on the ones that are either acidic or basic. So 
tell me about the trimethyl ammonium ion because we just kind of worked this out. If trimethylamine is a weak base and trimethyl ammonium ion is the conjugate of that weak base, then the trimethyl ammonium ion is a weak acid. So one of my ions is a weak acid. So far, so good. Let's look at my other ion, my perchlorate ion. Again, what is its conjugate? Where does it come from? You need to be familiar with the acids and the bases and how they work from the previous modules. And hopefully you can very quickly come to the conclusion that the perchlorate ion is the conjugate of HClO4, which is an acid. It is the perchloric acid. And perchloric acid should be ringing some bells and whistles in your head. If you try to look them up on the Ka table, you're not going to find them because perchloric acid is a strong acid. If you have the conjugate of a strong acid, the conjugate of that strong acid is neutral. There are reasons for this. There's chemistry behind it. Uh, a strong acid is strong because he's going to ionize 100% in water, which means he's not going to go backwards. You're talking about an equilibrium reaction that is 100% in the forward direction for that strong acid to ionize. So the reverse reaction doesn't happen. Therefore, in the reverse direction with the perchlorate ion, nothing's going to happen. He's neutral. He's not going to react with water to accept a proton because that reverse reaction is, is not at all likely. So once you decide you've got a neutral ion, you can ignore it. So we're over here. We're over here just working with the trimethyl ammonium ion. We do not have trimethylamine in our container. We have the trimethyl ammonium ion, which is a weak acid. And how do we find the pH of a weak acid? Once you figure out that it's an acidic ion, it will be a weak acid. That's the only way it happens. None of your ions are going to be strong. It just for the reasons we were just talking about. It just doesn't work that way. So if you have a basic ion, you're looking at a weak base. If you have an acidic ion, you're looking at weak acid. And how do you work a weak acid problem? You work a weak acid problem by writing an equilibrium reaction, by looking up a Ka value, by setting it up an ice table, solving for X. Your X is your H plus. From your H plus, you can find your pH. So we have to set up the equilibrium reaction. At this point, you can use the generic equilibrium reaction. You do not have to write it with all the formulas. Now, you should be able to recognize it with all the formulas. I think there was one on the quiz where you had to recognize which was the right equilibrium reaction. But when your question is, what is the pH of? Don't slow yourself down. Don't make it harder than it is. I'm just going to use that generic HA equilibrium with H plus and A minus this is my trimethyl ammonium ion. There's my weak acid. The fact that this is its conjugate, that, that means that's the trimethyl amine, but it doesn't matter. The H plus is the important one. I'm gonna need to find its concentration so I can get the pH. So I'm just gonna use that generic equilibrium reaction just to make my life easy so that I don't have to drag all those letters around. I need an ice table. This is going to be 0.21 molarity. And I need a Ka value. Now, I need the Ka value of the acid in the container, which is the trimethyl ammonium ion. I need the Ka for that ion. My table doesn't have a Ka value for it, but as we saw last time, Ka times Kb for a conjugate pair equals one times 10 to the minus 14. So this is gonna be one times 10 to the minus 14 divided by the Kb for trimethyl, ammon, uh, trimethyl amine. This is in the table. The, the trimethyl amine, this guy, that is the weak base that is the conjugate of trimethyl ammonium ion. He's in the table. He's got a Kb value. All right, so I've got a way to get the Ka value. The Ka value goes hand in hand with the fact that I have an ice table that shows an acid reaction. All right, minus X plus X, my Ka, again, I like, I don't like calculating it until I'm ready to calculate all of it. I'm gonna look up the Kb for trimethylamine. It is 6.3 times 10 to the minus five. Always use the values from our tables. I think we talked about that. 
And again, as I've stressed in the other videos, my suggestion is to always use that approximation with weak acids and bases. If it's not a good approximation, it's usually close. And so my approximation would be that 0.21 minus X is about equal to 0.21. I'll check it at the end. And that means I have one times 10 to the minus 14 divided by 6.3 times 10 to the minus five. And that's gonna equal X squared divided by 0.21. And now I'm gonna solve for X. Hopefully you're getting good at this algebra. And you come up with X equals 5.77 times 10 to the minus six. Now look at that exponent compared to the ones we've been running into. 10 to the minus six is a really small number. That is 0.00001234. All right, this is the number that is X. That is definitely very, very small compared to 0.21. So I'm gonna say that approximation is good. I'm not even gonna bother to check it. This is clear cut, that approximation works. That X is really, really small. I'm not even gonna check it. So since that's my X, let's see. Since that's my X, recall that X is the H plus, which means Take the negative log of it to get the pH. The pH is 5.24. Typically, we're gonna to go to two decimal places with our pH, but usually you're given some guidance in the problems. 5.24, do a quick check. 5.24 is an acidic pH. Was I expecting an acidic pH? Absolutely, because this is an acidic salt. As we come down, we find that one of the ions is acidic, the other one is neutral. I'm expecting an acidic pH. So pH 5.24, this should be it. Unless I made a math mistake, call out my math mistakes on the discussion board, but it should be good.